Welcome to this video on Stutlamp examination in which we are going to show you a case with an adherent leukoma. Here you need to understand that this is the opacity which we are talking about. This is a smallish opacity and probably if you take this as a corneal diameter which is about uh, 11 millimeters so this would be around about 3 millimeters. So I tend to eyeball it as well just to have an idea. So if you just keep in mind that what is the diameter of the cornea you can probably get a rough estimate what type of lesion you have. So how would you describe this lesion? You would say that you've got a scar which is present inferior to the pupillary center at 6 o'clock and it is about 3 millimeters from the limbus and it is oval in shape horizontally. The next thing which you want to see is, is this scar alone or is it associated with any adhesion of the iris behind it. So let's go forward and make a slit beam and bring the beam from the side and see what we have. So if you have a magnified beam you can see this is the area where actually this is the area where you can actually see the iris being adherent to the posterior part of this thing. So normally patients who would get a corneal ulcer would have this type of lesion in which they would have extremely thin area of this cornea and what will happen is as soon as you get a desmato seal over here then you get a perforation and as soon as you get a perforation the iris comes in and plugs this cap. So in untreated corneal ulcers usually what will happen is once you get that iris plugging that hole the cornea heals over it because you get vascularization from the iris. So that vascularization helps you to heal that cornea and you end up with a corneal scar but the difference would be that corneal scar would have an attachment at the back of it that would be an adherent leukoma. So you need to identify if you have a lesion and this is actually adherent to the back of the iris. And the other telltale thing which is showing you that it's an adherent leukoma and one thing more which you see in this patient is that you have an area where you get these pigment on the surface of the lens. So this is posterior synechy formation as well because as soon as the anterior chamber flattens out, the iris pulls out, the anterior chamber is going to be shallow like this, the lens is pushing behind it. So everything becomes in a flat anterior chamber when you've got this. Anteriorly the iris is going to adhere to the surface of the cornea and posteriorly it is going to adhere to the anterior surface of the lens. So that is why you're getting that posterior synechy but as soon as the things settle down and the anterior chamber is formed, you see that area which is well formed over there. The next thing which you see in this patient is an area of nuclear sclerosis. So if you grade this area of nuclear sclerosis, it is definitely an NS3 plus nuclear sclerosis and the nuclear sclerosis is going from the anterior capsule to the posterior capsule. So it is pretty dense nuclear sclerosis in this patient. So if you go forward on this, then other thing which you note is the iris is absent on the supratemporal part of this patient as well. So what has happened is actually this patient got an adherent leukoma and he underwent an opt optical iridectomy somewhere and that is what you see in this patient. Looking at the posterior segment, let's see if we can find anything significant in that but the patient was actually uh, being considered for cataract surgery because of his dense cataract but because of the adherent leukoma uh, some uh, apprehensions were there that he might not get a suboptimal or an optimal result. So thank you very much for watching.